Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in this latest video. So for a patient who attended with both a blocked right and left ear, now this is the patient's right ear, but it was in actual fact the left ear that was the worst of the two. Uh, upon attending, I did actually treat the left ear first, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just showing you the right ear first because it's a bit shorter than the left. Um, the backstory, so the case history of this patient is that they actually uh, were seen by another audiologist uh, who attempted to remove the wax from the left ear, but they actually found that inadvertently the wax got pushed further in and it got impacted on the eardrum. And it, so it actually exacerbated the patient's symptoms. And at that point, the patient um, decided to uh, visit myself. Um, so we're just in the right ear. The patient's got a lot of dry skin at the entrance of the ear. Uh, this wax, and you, you'll see it more so in the left ear, uh, it's a bit stodgy, mushy, there's a bit of a lot of keratin that's um, made up, making up the wax as well. So the majority of earwax, believe it or not, is dead skin. It's around 60% dead skin. And the other 40% of earwax it consists of sebum, which is the oily, fatty secretion that uh, is also found in our scalp and an oily sweat, um, the same sweat um, found under our armpits. That's, that's if you do um, have that particular gland. So that particular gland that um, uh, produces a, a fatty sweat, an oily sweat under your armpits and in your ears, is dependent upon a specific gene mutation. Um, if you have this specific gene mutation, you do have that. And that, wax, that mutation generally gives you more of a wetter, um, a mushier type of wax, just like in this patient. And so the oily sweat, um, if you have that, and the sebum, so the fatty oily substance also secreted on our scalp, combines with dead skin, and that uh, is the, 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 the ingredients list, um, the cocktail that makes earwax. I will say in this patient, they've got a, a bit of a higher concentration of dead skin, um, just because of this kind of almost eczema they've got at the entrance of the ear. And this dead skin dies, it sheds, and it, it doesn't migrate, it wilts, and it um, combines with this, um, this wax. And it, it can be difficult to remove, and you'll see on the left side more, and I've managed to almost remove this in a single plug. Um, some, quite often we put some drops in here, and the drops, what it does, it binds it together, so it doesn't um, block up the suction probe, it doesn't break up in little pieces. I managed to remove this without using any drops, but the left side, the second ear, is a different story completely. And even at this stage, the patient's symptoms are alleviated. You can see the eardrum, the distance the sign can travel through. Um, but I'm just trying to peel a bit of dead skin away if possible. I think there's um, uh, a lot of viewers enjoy watching every little last speck of wax being removed. And it's not always necessary to do that. In fact, it's something that I advocate against when we train our clear wax delegate. Sometimes less is more. And by trying to remove every little last speck, you're potentially uh, gonna cause uh, trauma injury to the patient. You could, uh, remember when we use suction, it's quite noisy and excessive loud noise can lead to a temporary or permanent threshold shift um, in your hearing. It can also, cause and lead tinnitus. A tinnitus is a, uh, it could be any type of sound, but uh, more, most commonly it's a ringing or buzzing noise that originates within the ear or inside the head. So it's not an external sound, it's, it's, it's the origin is within the ear or the head. Um, the best example for that is, oh, a bit, getting a bit too old for it now myself, but um, if you go to a, loud, uh, a, a noisy bar or club and uh, with loud music and when you exit that arena, your ears can ring a bit for a few, uh, typically up to 48 hours. So yeah, um, excessive loud noise can um, lead to either temporary or permanent um, tinnitus. It can exacerbate your symptoms. If you have got tinnitus already, it can make it worse. So um, here I'm using a fine end suction process, a lot, lot quieter. And we're on the cartilaginous portion, so the risks are far less here. And because this patient has got a bit of otitis externa, that's my clinical reason to try and remove this, if, if possible, as much as I can. Otherwise, the skin has got potential of uh, wilting away and causing a bit of infection in the ear. But when we train our clear wax delegates, we're, uh, it's one of the things I do stress, less is more, 
try not to overclean the ear because at, in your early days at least you, you can cause more problems um, than is required and so in, you, you're, you're setting out to help the patient but you, the patient can be leaving with more symptoms so you've got to be really really careful so again we're just on the cartilaginous portion so the cartilaginous portion is the outer third it's um, semi-flexible, semi-sensitive. It's, it's, it's a region of the ear where we can apply some pressure. It's in a two-thirds of the ear canal. It's the bony parts. So it's a lot more sensitive. Uh, again, when we're training our clear wax delegates, um, I always make reference to that game operation where the buzzer goes off if you make contact when you're trying to remove the plastic uh, femur or tibia from the, um, from the body uh, if you make contact with the side walls. Again, just... See if this peels now. This skin, it's not going to peel all the way. It's it's not ready to be. Um, it's not quite shedded yet. But I managed to peel a slither there. The patient's eardrums in the distance, nice and healthy. You got a light reflex there. And we're going to come on to the left ear shortly. And this is the the problematic ear. In fact, the patient themselves didn't notice that their right ear was blocked. It was only after I removed the blockage in their left ear that they became aware of the blockage on the right, so that's because the, the left ear was far more substantial. So again, we're just on the outer third here. We're on the posterior lateral canal walls. This is the, the back part of the ear canal um, near, near the entrance. I saw some comments yesterday in yesterday's videos. There's a few Quite a few people, angry people out there, aren't there? You know? So it's beggar's belief when you read some of the comments. Um, uh, thankfully, the majority of the comments are really positive and great. Um, but yeah, you get the odd few. I think some repeat um, serial offenders as well. And uh, it was quite funny. I actually had a colleague, or a couple of colleagues, should I say, who, who watched the video and they read some of the comments and they private messaged me. And um, they were saying that they were kind of almost in awe themselves of the procedure because it was a procedure that they would never uh, under uh, attempt to undertake themselves. And then they were reading some of the comments and they were just flabbergasted. And I had to explain, well, that unfortunately is the world of social media. And it's why they themselves don't actually upload videos on, on, on some platforms because um, of such, um, yeah, just some people really that kind of spoil it for the majority. In any case, so this is the patient's left ear. Uh, so you can see in the distance, that's been pushed right in. Inadvertently, so the specialist that they saw didn't do that intentionally. Um, but it's with this consistency of wax, uh, if you're not careful, you sort of suctioning, because it's uh, mushy, it can block the suction um, tube. So when you put the suction tube into the ear, because if it's blocked and you're not aware that it's blocked, it acts like a cotton bird. You're just kind of shoving it further in. So, and. The, this, this is a bit more complex because the entrance is a bit narrower. Again, they've got a bit of otitis externa, a bit of eczema information of the outer ear canal. So I'm just trying to um, clear the entrance initially. And this ear, they've been using a lot of drops as well, and that can be counterproductive. It's made the wax really wet. Now, this is on the eardrum. Now, the, the, the conundrum we have here is how thick this layer is. If I poke um, the suction probe too far in too soon, I might just go through the eardrum. So how thick is this layer? And we don't know. We, we won't know. You have to um, almost spar with this ear. And we're just hovering over. And because of the consistency, it's very mushy. It's so hard to suction. It's not really suctioning as well. It, it's it's the best way to describe it. You know, uh, if, you, if you've been watching my videos for a while now, you know I like my food analogies. It's like mashed potato. Um, um, it's that consistency. It's so stodgy. Now it ended up being a lot thicker than I thought this this layer, but it, this layer could be uh, less than a uh, well, tenth of a mil. Um, but we, we, it's really hard to tell, so I'm just being a bit cautious. I'm just what I'm doing here. Sometimes with this type of um, condition, if you if you peel the skin from the entrance and go all the way to the eardrum, it can release it from the eardrum as well. So I'm back at the entrance. You can see I'm just trying to peel this off the back part of the ear canal. I'm slowly going forwards towards the eardrum, but it is really stodgy and sticky. It's quite strong adhesion, so the skin uh, uh, at various points, as I'm peeling it, it's detaching itself. 
So what we're doing here, again, just on the anterior canal walls, the front part of the ear canal near the entrance. Just want to gently peel this off, if I can, go towards the eardrum. So if this is a bit drier and firmer, it would peel a lot better. Going just at the bottom of the ear canal. We've got to be careful now as we're encroaching on the bony part. We don't want to make contact with the bony part or we want to make minimal contact. We want to almost hover over. So yeah, you need a really steady hand to to perform this procedure, this type of procedure. Uh, if the patient was asleep or in the local anaesthetic, you can be a bit more vigorous. Um, the patient's not going to feel any pain. You may traumatise their ear afterwards, but they're not going to feel that as such. And they're not going to flinch and move during the procedure. So the last thing we want. Um, so the average uh, diameter of the ear canal, um, the height, it varies along different points of the uh, of the ear canal. So the entrance and uh, near the eardrum are the widest, um, broadest part of the ear canal. And this is going on averages. So the average width of the entrance of the ear can range between, I would say, seven to nine millimetres. And the height, so it is almost like an oval shape, like American football or rugby ball in the UK. The height is greater than the width. And at the entrance, it could be eight to uh, uh, eight mil to a centimetres. Um, in height then at the uh, the second bend juncture so about a centimetre the, into the ear the, the ear narrows uh, and we call narrowings isthmus, uh, isthmuses and in that region the, the ear canal can narrow uh, the width can range between say five and seven millimetres and the height between um, I'd say six and eight maybe Beyond that, we're, then we're on the bony part of the ear. The ear does widen and it narrows again about a half a centimetre away from the eardrum. Again, we call that an isthmus. And then it protrudes back outwards. So the eardrum, um, the diameter, the height and width is very similar to the entrance. So up to a centimetre in height, so between 8 mil and 10 mil in height. And the width is between uh, around 7 and 9 millimetres wide. So... I've just put some drops in. I've put some sodium bicarbonate drops here. It generally works a bit better with this type of, um, as I said, it's a lot of keratin. And again, I'm just hovering over the ear canal, uh, over the this, this, this impact, because I just don't know how, how thick it is. If I embed the suction probe in too quick, too soon, I'm going to go through the patient's eardrum. So these are the, I wouldn't say, so I enjoy removing all types of earwax, but Maybe it's not about enjoying it. These are probably the most challenging cases I find because of the consistency. It really does get the adrenaline pumping when you've got this type of wax smothered all over the eardrum. And for me, even if I can just remove half of this debris, the patient can hear, I'll be, I'll be quite content. Um, over time, this should naturally migrate off the ear. It's just because it's been impacted, the patient's symptoms have been really exacerbated. But the skin that lines the eardrum uh, and the ear canal, it naturally migrates. We call it the epithelial migration. And it varies, uh, but it, it can range between, say, no, uh, 1.5 millimetres and 3 millimetres a month, similar to our uh, fingernail tips. And if you average the average adult ear canal being 3 centimetres in length uh, and, and the quicker range of that migration, say 3 millimetres, so it can take 10 months of skin that uh, originates from the eardrum to shed... Uh, and migrate out of the ear canal and as it does it can take away a lot of the debris on the surface with it so again I'm just trying to peel a bit more from the sides hoping this goes towards the eardrum but it, it never so I think I'm going to put some more drops again and we just have to try to get this off the eardrum now so the tactical trying to peel the skin towards the eardrum, so this comes off with it, hasn't, hasn't worked. Now we know this bit's a bit denser, you can tell by the, the texture, so it's a bit, a bit to the right of the suction probe, that's the flatter bit in here. Um, the surface protrudes outwards a bit more, so we know this is a bit of a thicker layer, so I'm just putting a bit more pressure here. And this was co causing complete hearing loss for the patient. Um, they, they weren't able to hear a thing from this side. So, just put some more drops in. And again, we're using sodium bicarbonate drops. I'm a big fan of olive oil. 
drops for the majority of the time. But when you've got a higher consistency of keratin dead skin in, in the impaction, I find that sodium bicarbonate works better. The one thing I would stay away from uh, and advise against, and, and I think this is what the patient used initially, it was hydrogen peroxide drops. Now, you may have seen that there's a little hole there to the right. That, the patient commented straight away, um, they could hear a lot better. And also, there's a, you can see the top part of the hammer bone there, just at the top. So there's two gaps now. And believe it or not, even that had it massively improved the patient's symptoms, considering how bad they were when they first came in. But that's now helped me because creating that little opening has now shown me the depth, how thick this layer of um, dead keratin and wax is on the drum. It's given me some um, context. Um, so you can see it's quite a thick layer. It's about, say, three or four mil, well, probably slightly less than that, two or three mil. And now I've got a good suction grip. And we're just removing this completely off the eardrum. You can see it's got trap at the entrance because it's quite narrow. So that's quite a fair chunk off the drum. So their, their symptoms are completely alleviated. I'm just going to mop up as much as possible. Now, again, some people, uh, I'm sure, are going to write some um, comments and, well, it's up to them, but it, they're not going to like the fact that there's going to be a bit of staining around the edge. And... Um, Again, I'm, I'm, we're not trying to cause any pain for the patient. That's my priority. I'm going to hover over as much of this wet. It's more staining this, this wax. They've been using drops for so long. It, it, another analogy, again, going to food, you're having your Sunday roast and you've finished all your, your, your Yorkshire puddings and your, your rice chicken and all your vegetables and your roast, the roasties. And the gravy is just coating the, um, the dish. And similarly, this stodgy wax kit skin that's been oiled and it's just staying in the ear canal. And it can be really, really hard to remove because it is sticky, this as well, it's stodgy. And again, we don't want to um, graze the canal. Um, you're, I'm going to try to put a video, maybe tomorrow, if not end next week, uh, of, where, of a video where actually I did graze the ear canal accidentally using forceps, the tip of them, because they're quite a sharp tip. And I was trying to detach some skin off the canal wall. And I was first of all trying to lift the skin away as much as possible so I can get the jaws in safely. But unfortunately it wasn't far enough away and the, 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 the distal end of the forceps just grazed it very, very slightly. Now, the patient themselves weren't aware, but there was a bit of bleeding. Obviously I did tell them what happened and I showed it to them as well and it clotted straight away. And, it was it was not going to cause them any uh, issues per se, but again, I'd rather have not have done that. So I'm just using the fine end suction gauge here. And just right, the roof. This is um, right on the top part of the ear canal. To get the angle here, uh, I'm kind of my head slightly tilted under, almost un underneath the ear, looking upwards. And the endoscope itself, so which I hold in my non don't have, I've uh, rotated it upwards to get that view at the top. So I'm just mopping up near the entrance. And that's the patient's eardrum. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care. Speak to you soon.